here we are. Okay, sorry guys for the delay. We had just a couple of technical difficulties. We're here now. We've got Lauren Zander in the house again for our monthly visit. And uh, we're so excited to talk to you guys about uh, how to make 2019 your best year and a couple of other questions, et cetera. So thank you, Lauren, as usual, for being the absolute best person on the planet and for being here with us today. My pleasure. So uh, how was your Thanksgiving? <laughs> Uh, you know, I have a, I, I really have a, a designed family, right? Like I, we've done all the work. And so by the time we get together and bring new people in and it's the best, right? Yeah. Trust me, that took 10 years, but, um, but, but it really, at this point, my kids had their boyfriends there. Like we had extras. We went around the table and asked like hot, intimate questions. Like we really have a rock and Thanksgiving. Very, oh. ha very Handel style. That is. How was yours? Mine was not Handel style. <laughs> um, it was good. We had we had family in town. We had Tori's family in town, which um, sorry to my family because I know you're probably gonna watch this, but they're way easier than my family. So that was really nice. And we have two new toddlers, uh, two two year olds that we uh, were around. So that was fun. It's like holidays are always more fun with kids around. I think because it's just. I don't know, for me, they're like a fun distraction because then I can like hang with them and take care of them and not have to like deal with life. Yes, well, um, no wonder I have a job for the rest of my life. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> You're keeping me employed. I got that. I, I really do love my job and I really so, do like cleaning up family messes. Yeah. And yeah, and you're really good at it. So I really appreciate that personally. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I wanna to talk to you about New Year's resolutions because yeah. I feel like it's, for some people it's interesting, like as I've gotten older, it's almost like a, a dirty word now. People are like, I don't do New Year's resolutions because they never work or they, they feel like it's above them somehow. And mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, just for us in general, when we make those types of commitments, and obviously you're really big on making commitments mm -hmm. um, just in general. Mm -hmm. But I think that for some reason, when it comes to like the new year, we have this opportunity to start again. And so I want to talk to you about why you think people have an aversion to New Year's resolutions and why or why they don't work. Okay. People don't like making New Year's resolutions because they don't keep them and then they get hurt that they got all psyched up for changing their life from year to year, which is really the right time to change your life, actually. Yeah. So the desire to make them, I think, is pretty profound and our inability to keep them makes us assholes about them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. quick and simple and dirty folks, right? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, so, and I don't, I don't like, so I love New Year's, right? Mm -hmm. I love, I, you know, I love the traditions I do for New Year's and even New Year's Eve. And so I'm excited to talk about how to do it in a very fun, interesting way. And, you know, it's like what I've been doing. It's even older than 10 years now, right? It's like been since my husband and I started dating. And we would do the same thing every New Year's Eve because, and it was, and then we have a party. And um, so ask me more questions before. Okay, I, yeah, no, no, no. I like that. So, and, and I think that having a ritual or some, some type of tradition around setting the tone for what's to come is really important, right? So yeah. tell, tell me more about that. All right. Well, so first of all, this is hysterical. Everyone is doing something right now, right? And and I recommend everyone do it, right? Um, if I have to do it, I'm like, you have to do it, okay, right? Well, so so think of it this way, okay? So, and this is one of, and so this ritual, I find like, make, like how to make rock and roll in your own life mm -hmm. and yeah. to have a transition from 2018 to 2019, okay? And that's exactly what this is for. And I make people, write a Def Jam poem. 
uh-huh. Right. And you're like, what's a Def Jam poem? I'm like, well, go Google this one. You don't need more than this one, which is write down, shake the dust. Okay. And if you write down, shake the dust, it'll come up that it's had over a million hits. Right. Oh. And um, what we do, and after you watch that one, because it's a really deep, profound one, like shake the dust off of you in the way you're not being true to yourself. It's like a yeah. profound shake the dust. So oh. don't worry, it'll rock your heart. But then what I want you to do, like the assignment really is after you do that, please, you know what we can even, we even have the assignment handout written up. And so we can give people the assignment if you want them to link to it after. Yeah. Um, so what you'll do if you want to do this is you'll watch, we actually have two uh, Def Jam poems that we love to show people. And then what it's all about is a Def Jam poem is telling on yourself. It's going into your deepest, darkest truth about what you need to let go of to be free. Right. And so what's and then so what I'm really asking you is what do you want to be true for next year? And what are you letting go of this year? So that could be true for next year. And then if you literally write it into your poem and you actually have to perform your poem to someone, yes, of course you have to perform it, right? Um, it really is a way that you can share yourself deeply, even if it's just with your best friend, right? Or you and your best friend write that poem. It really is what are you surrendering, giving up about yourself in any way, shape or form? And then why are you giving it up is because you want something to be possible. And right. the thing you want it for. And so that's what we're doing. And then what we do is um, on New Year's Eve, we collage, right? And we do, a, am I allowed to curse? Yeah, you can curse. Okay. And we do a fuck that, bye, get the fuck out of my life, yuck, shit, <laughs> like everything you're leaving on this side of the year. Yeah. Right? And you literally hold up your poster board at midnight, like so everyone goes around at midnight, we have a big bonfire outside. You could use a fireplace, you could use a fire pit, right? But burn that shit, right? And you're gonna burn what you're saying goodbye to after you've collaged it to death. Everybody bring 10 magazines and like bring a potluck and we collage everything we're saying goodbye to and then we are gonna read our Def Jam poem for what we're creating for the new year. Okay. Yeah. And um, and then you'd be amazed if you actually have a community, how profound it is to do it together. Even if your community is five people, even if you do it with your kids, do you think your kids can't understand this? They understand this, mm -hmm. right? Like everyone understands it, right? So yeah. that is, is ending New Year's resolutions and going for that every year of your life matters and it's okay what sucked about this past year sucked. Everyone's got a list of what sucked. And then everyone can take what sucked and turn it into what are you surrendering to? What are you changing? What are you promising for the next year, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then declaring that in your poem. Right. Like, yeah. You know, and we even have an example. So my sister Marnie, who's actually a very good writer. So she took the the Def Jam poem, Shake the Dust, and she wrote her poem and it's called Fuck the Net. Oh, OK. Yeah. And you can even leave everybody with the assignment and they can link. You'll let them link and yeah. they, can re they can do the full assignment, which is watch that and then see what she wrote and then take on your own. Does that make sense how to do it? Yeah. yeah. And then as long as you do it with one other person, right, then it'll be very meaningful and really mm -hmm. rock end of year creating new year. And yeah. then I would take on one real promise, not a resolution, but a real promise, whether it's dating, losing weight, getting a new job, like something that you're dying to change in your life, make the one promise that really will change your life. Wow. So I think, why why do you think it's so powerful to share this with someone else? Well, first of all, when you share your heart, like your heart is sad about what it's sad about this year and it wants what it wanted that it doesn't have yet. 
And then I think your head's job is how to get it. And your hoo-ha, right? Your hoo-ha's job is like, yeah, I think that's cool. It's a fan. It's rooting for you. It wants you to have it, right? So they're all kind of gearing. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is we've been so disappointed in life because we haven't gotten what we want or we haven't worked hard enough at it or like some reason has us feel diminished. Um, but the, you know, the bad joke is it's Groundhog Day, right? Like that movie, Groundhog Day. I am sorry, do it again. I am sorry, do it again, right? Oh, I'm sorry, do it again, <laughs> right? Welcome to the human race. Like the ticket in is, I'm sorry, that didn't work, do it again. <laughs> Go yeah. do it again, right? So we get, we just get hurt and we want to quit and have a cocktail, right? Versus go deep face it and fight for things we want in our lives. Yeah. Why do you, do you think that that's because we, I don't want to say that we're goal oriented, but like for me, I need to have a deadline. I need to have like something to, to strive for, like something that's coming up or like, you know, my coach has homework for me that I have to complete before our next conversation you know, the, the types of things that are like benchmarks, if people don't have those benchmarks, then what do you think that that's a big issue for why they don't they don't make those promises or why they share them? Yes, I think I think if you really think about it, we expect the paycheck to be in our account exactly when they say we ex we are there's not like we expect people to stop at red lights mm -hmm. we expect our kids to do their homework we expect the yoga teacher to show up and teach a great class i paid for it right mm -hmm. and i expect to do downward dog right like so there's <laughs> like a <laughs> right like so we are not lacking anywhere on earth expectations. We expect the sun to come up exactly when it comes up, right? Yeah. So so to pretend we're not wildly goal oriented would be not to understand the nature of being human. To use that to our advantage is like a duh, mm. right? And so if yeah. you're failing at something you want, you're not taking the right actions or enough of them. Sorry, that's just a duh. Yeah. How can people gauge what those, uh, can gauge the importance of the promise? Like, do you think that people should start with like a small promise? Like I'm gonna give up chocolate or a promise like I'm going to commit to saying yes for the year or something, you know, like that. Uh, here's what you need. It's the biggest promise you can make that you'll pay the consequence for. Oh, <sighs> right. It's not yeah. the smallest thing. You're looking for self-respect. Like people want to respect themselves. And, you know, I started with a brand new client, right? And if you, like literally she wrote out her homework, it was 20 pages long. She's so messed up about how messed up she's like, like, but every last thing about all of it, she's like 12 pounds overweight and a bit of a pig. That's it. Like if you're like, and then because of that, like those two stupid things, the amount she sacrifices in self-respect in her job and her this and her that, like she's covering up, she'll lie about where the paper is, like she'll, she's in a constant crazy frenzy over nothing. Do you understand? Like, and then ends up lying. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't send that, <gasps> right? And then she lies about it and then she feels even worse about herself, but it's all petty crimes. Does that make sense? Like petty yeah. And I go, do you have any idea how easy we're gonna fix this? Like, I, I, I know you don't know this is easily fixed, but, and I'm gonna, and then I say, I'm gonna give you three chances, like little rabbit foo-foo, right? Remember, like I have kids, right? So you remember that? Do you remember that song? No. There's like this song, like little rabbit foo-foo when hopping through the forest, they get three chances before I, like I'll fire you if you don't keep these promises with me. These are easy. <laughs> 
right? And you get three strikes right. or I'm out yeah. of here because yeah. I can change your life so easily if you got a little bit of integrity. Yeah. Like you have no idea how dumb what's costing you everything is. Yeah. So she's like, okay, I'll do it. Right. And I literally said, you can eat anything you want except anything on this list. And I get your diet every day. Like, send it to me, baby. And you have to do one hour, one hour of, and as long as you stop and time it, one hour of cleaning, cleaning up after anything. It could be your emails, it could be your closet, it could be the sink, it could be like just one hour of extra cleaning a day. Guess what? What is she? She's lost four pounds, right? Lost four pounds, right? For someone who only needs to lose like 12, do you have any idea how much better you feel with four gone? Right. And then she's had those extra 12 for three years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there, she, no one's looking at her like she's even fat. She's just hating herself for nothing. Yeah. So then we got her to keep that promise plus the hour. Like she can't even believe how much more decisive she's being in all areas of her life. How long have we been working together? Two and a half weeks. Wow. She's sending her damn email every day. She's doing the work. Does that work sound really hard? No. Will you hate yourself dramatically if you don't do the little things that would change your life? And then you think there's something really wrong with you. There's yeah. not something really wrong with us, except we're being putzes in a way that really offends us. So that's what we all need to stop. Right. There's like the two promises that would kick your ass, but they aren't hard. Yeah. But boy, would you like yourself better? Yeah. And I think that I think that the end of the year and turning into a new year is a great time to make those promises because it's like everything is changing. Right. Everyone goes into this transition. So what are some tips that you think for ending the year? Uh, that people can do in this transition from the end yeah. to the beginning? I think, I actually think it's very natural during this time for you to have everything you can't stand about your family, everything you can't stand about the holidays, every, like every Scrooge in us mm -hmm. is screaming for what we wish would change in our life whether it's that relationship, that conversation, that dynamic, that thing about ourselves, right? So we're towards the end of the year because we live, we live in time, right? It's our medium. And so at the end of a year, it's really a serious measurement. It's why kids scream at their birthdays, right? It's like, there's only so much time you're going to get to be on this planet. You don't even know the end date. So taking every year very seriously is actually beautiful and spiritual. And we, I don't want anyone minimizing that. And so mostly people are in a bit of a bitch festival between now and the end of the year. And then they're over drinking and overeating and blaming the culture for it. And then they numb out. And then by the time it's January 5th, they actually do want to make resolutions because they feel fat and over drank or, you know, too hot, you know, like didn't like had to hide, you know, like whatever. So right. the miracle of them listening to this right now is to realize that everything you're upset about or wish was different, you can do something about, right? And yeah. that, that, that dare is real, right? And so for those of you who overeat during the holiday season and overdrink, right? Raise your hands. You understand it's most people. <laughs> okay, like, yeah, I'm like can you see both my hands? I'm like this. Though you look very good, so no one believes you, honey. No, but I, I'm like, you know, my my thing is like a sugar. I'm a sugar addict, you know, and I use the excuse of like, oh, it's the holidays. I can have all of my vegan treats. They're vegan, so what if it's a cookie and a cake and cupcakes and chocolate? Okay, got it. If you know I'm saying if you want to do that, like this is my holiday season and I always gain five pounds and then I lose it, do it on purpose. 
Don't, yeah. Don't like do it like I am allowed a cookie every day between Thanksgiving and New Year's. <laughs> right. Designing it and going, I'm doing it is very different than, you know, it's it's the Christmas party's fault. It's the yeah. holiday season's fault. I oh, can't yeah. help it. Okay. Yeah. And I think that I love that you, you spoke to that because I feel like a lot of the times people do use that as an excuse. And I'm like, oh, wow, like we've all just come to accept it when I hear my friends talk about, oh, it's the holidays. Like I'm just going to, oh, the holidays are coming or, or when I'm working with a client, like, oh, the holidays are coming. So I need a little extra, you know, like, you know, I have parties to go to and, and you know, all these things. And, and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but it's just like any other day. like. I get that. But for me, I, I like this is my hibernation period. It's usually December is usually when I take time off after working all year. So I like to lay in bed and watch some Netflix and, you know, veg out, you know, so but it's like what you said, it's intentional. And I feel it's different because for me, it's not a challenge to say, oh, all right, I got to get like back to the gym or I got to go, you know, and I have you. So for me, that's like, that's fine. <laughs> You know, it's an intentional thing that I do. But for most people, I, I like that you're saying that it's like this just accepted thing that it's OK to, you know, go off the rails. Yes. And um, yeah, so a person needs to design their eating habits during this season. Right. Yeah. And also their drinking habit during this season. Right. And and what they want the season to mean. So it's actually meaningful. Right. Yeah. Like really put some love in the holiday season and yeah. put something in that would mean something to you. Like take something on with your family, with yourself. What like bring some holiday spirit to your holidays. Right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of surviving your holidays, drinking through your holidays and eating overeating your holidays. Yeah. Right. And so I make all my clients confront the holidays before they happen. So that they design it so it's not the predictable, you know, roll your eyes, gain weight, pathetic, someone else's fault season. Right. <laughs> you literally just gave all the excuses that everybody gives. Um, okay, so just a final, final thoughts here on... Um, just a couple of things that people can do. Actually, I have a personal question for sure. a friend. A friend. <laughs> I have a friend question. What kind of advice would you give to a person who's trying to do all of these things and you know it has created a, a a promise and is is has their 10 magazines ready to go to do the collage and and they're gonna go spend their holiday with their family members. Yeah. How do you stay on track and not let the energetic field of toxicity seep into your perfectly healthy aura? Okay. Um, okay. You have to get that you're the strangest chick in town and that you're like the Tinkerbell when no one believes in Tinkerbell, right? Does that make sense? Like you're Tinkerbell, like, so yeah. instead of trying to stay in a bubble, mm. why don't you get busy sprinkling fairy dust, right? So make a collage for each of them. Oh. Right, like rat, like be the freak you are, be the goofy yogi, you know, spread love and joy kind of vegan. Uh -huh. right? that no one really understands quite yet, ahead of her time, right? And um, and actually bring that out, right? And so give your mom a little beautiful collage. Give your like whoever that list is that you just said. And I have no idea, mom. I'm making that up. Right. I don't know. Anything. Yeah, mom, it's not you, mom. It's not you, mom. I, I'm really, it's really not. Um, but what you would do in that scene is be the goofball, share with people what you do, even share with people that, you know, and what was the year you imagined yourself on the cover of Yoga Journal? 
Mm, that was that was like probably six years ago. Right. So you made yeah. a collage. So that's pretty wild, right? That's mm -hmm. like some witchy, cool magic. Yeah. So if you tell everybody, well, let me just tell you, I'm a little bit of a funky witch. And hi, I know that sounds crazy, right? So go with the crazy, go with it, right? And literally make people witchy presents and give them the collage for them. They'll be moved and giggly. Mm but you'll be spreading fairy dust in a direction that no one expected it, right? Yeah. Be, you know, be the light. Yeah. And be okay with being the weirdest light in the room. Yeah, oh, I love that. I love that so much, I've never thought about that. What a fun project to do too. I think that's really cool. Um, all right, Lauren, as <laughs> usual, I don't even know where the time flies when we do this. I'm just like, let's just talk all day. This is I just talk all day. day. So. Um, okay, so for you guys, everybody that's watching this, uh, we do have a special offer and it should be up. And I know that Handel just posted it now, but there is a complimentary 30 minute call to learn more about coaching options and $75 off your coaching course. And you can get it here. Um, we'll also, we'll also link it in the comments. So if you go to the comments, we have the other link posted there and, um, yes. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in learning more about Lauren's method and how she creates incredible lives for millions of people all over the world, you have an opportunity to also learn that yourself. And yeah, so stay tuned for next month when we do, it'll be the new year. So hopefully you guys got some good stuff out of this. There was a lot of really great information. And if you're watching this after the fact, just sign up for any updates and you can also uh, stay up to date if you like the Handel Group uh, Life Coaching page and the Radically Loved page, of course, and look forward to having Lauren Zander on the podcast again here in the new year. So we will see you guys soon. Yay! Yay. Happy, new year. Happy new year. Write a poem. <laughs>